Hi, welcome to Nash's Arts. Recently, I bought this t-shirt with a little bit of embroidered pattern on the shoulder. But of course, I wanted more. So I used the Tulip Puffy paint and added this embellishment to it. So in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how I did that. I'm going to use the white Tulip Puffy paint and I'm going to show you on a black t-shirt. But you could do it any which way around you liked. Before we get started, please do like and subscribe to my channel. Your support is greatly appreciated. So here's a close up of the t-shirt I just showed you and you can see how the paint is sort of puffy on the fabric. And maybe you're wondering if I've actually washed this t-shirt. I have. I washed it on a very cold wash in the machine and I kept the t-shirt inside like a little uh, laundry bag and it came out beautiful so I'm very happy with it. So here is the black t-shirt that I'm going to decorate. It's got these little pearls along the top. I haven't decided if I like those or not yet. Maybe I'll incorporate them into the design. But I think what I'm going to do is do basically like a big doodle that comes from this shoulder and this sleeve and down into the center of the top. I guess if you wanted to plan it out, you could use like a little white crayon or a color pencil, which would wash off when you this into the wash. The other thing that's important to note is if your fabric or your um, item of clothing that you want to customize is fresh from the shop, it's a good idea for you to uh, wash it in the washing machine first to get rid of any starch that they have put on it at the shop or in the factory. Because if the starch on it, it kind of prevents the um, the fabric paint from actually sitting correctly and staying. Although the tulip puffy paint doesn't soak all the way through the fabric, I'm still going to put some cardboard in between my t-shirt layers just in case, just to be careful. So you can see the cardboard is now inside my t-shirt just to protect it in case it goes through. So all of this area now has cardboard under it, which will stop any paint from going through to the other side. And now I'm gonna get started. I'm gonna start with the shoulder area and I'm gonna create some big shapes, which I'm then gonna fill in. It's a good idea to shake the puffy paint pen before you use it to get all the paint down near the nozzle. It's also good, if you've never used it before, to try it out on a bit of scrap fabric first before you have a go on your main piece of clothing. You need to take it slow and smooth and keep the pressure stable. If any little bubbles appear, stop and go back and just pop the bubble with the nozzle. Sometimes when you squeeze, the paint splats out like this. If you sort of get into a creative mindset, you can actually turn that into a pattern. Uh, if not, it's probably best to use um, something to scrape it off gently uh, and, and uh, fix it that way. But it's much easier to turn it into something creative. There's my first big shape. I'm gonna just have a bit of fun now, filling it in and spreading down more with some more unusual shapes. Remember, if you don't feel 100% confident doing this freehand, you can use that white pencil and draw your design on and then go over what you've drawn carefully with the puffy paint. This is what I've done so far. And what I would recommend is every now and again, just clean the nozzle, whether you use a tissue or your finger, just 
sometimes it collects some of the paint around it and then it ends up slightly spreading where you don't want it. The second thing is, this may sound a little bit spiritual and mindful, but when you, the more you think about it as you're doing your pattern, the more wobbly they often are. But when you're free and you just let your hand move, the patterns usually come out much more flowing. The key thing is when you're pressing this to keep a gentle, constant pressure. Otherwise you end up with sort of blobby lumps. I'll show you an example. Just around here you can see where the pressure faltered and I've got a larger lump which I then had to go in and use the nozzle to kind of tidy up. So keep it flowing and keep it sort of not too overthought. So at the moment I've got the big shapes in, but what I need to do now is fill in some really tiny little details. Otherwise it just kind of looks like a big set of blobs. So dots work really well. You gently push until some come, comes out, press in and lift. And how you lift off is the kind of shape the way that you can control the shape of the dot. So sometimes you can lift straight up and you get really pointy ones, or you can press it in a bit more and then you get kind of more flat round dots. So those are quite funky and they really do sit up um, away from the fabric. I don't know if you can see that, but they're really standing out from the fabric. I guess you can use any colour on the black or, you know, or I guess on any colour t-shirt. Um, I was thinking about using red on this, but I'm not sure yet. Red, black and white is one of my favourite combinations. It just looks so good. Yellow might stand out really nicely. And you can also get... Um, different uh, shiny metallic ones. So Tulip do different hacks. This was the pack of colors that I got, but you can choose and select different ones. So there's ones with metallic elements in it um, and different shades and sets of colors. Um, so you can choose different packs, which I think is really useful. Another exciting use of these tulip dimensional paints is the glow in the dark set. You could decorate um, a t-shirt for Halloween with a skeleton on or a cap so that it glows in the dark, which is pretty exciting. So I'm just finishing the very last bit of this off. Um, and I suppose if you've never used this puffy paint before, I could describe it a bit like maybe icing a cake. Um, it feels a little bit like that. So there's an element of control, but there's also an element where you just have to go with the flow. And if there are little smudges, you turn it into something else, which kind of is quite spontaneous and fun. Um, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Um, and if you're interested in doing any more with fabric paint. Um, I've got a really great video reviewing different uh, fabric paints and fabric pens uh, where I recommend some of the really good ones and the ones that are not quite as good. Um, and if you're interested in doing something a bit like this but um, using fabric pens only rather than the puffy paint I've also got another great tutorial on how to draw and close using fabric pens and that that's really helpful for showing you little tips and tricks for that. 
Um, once you've done your pattern, you need to let it dry for about 72 hours. After four hours, it's sort of a little bit more set, so it doesn't sort of smudge, but it needs 72 hours to really set properly. After that, you can wash it. I always recommend, like I said earlier in the video, washing by putting it on a cold wash um, or hand washing even. Put it in a laundry bag and make sure that um, it's on a gentle wash. Then hang, hang it out to dry, trying to keep the shape of the t-shirt um, on the line that you're drying it out on so that, that you know it's just cared for. The last thing to note about tulip puffy paint is that you don't need to heat set it. Leaving it for those 72 hours will adhere it to the fabric successfully and there's no need to use heat, no need to iron it, which is amazing. If you're interested in looking at any of my other artwork, feel free to check out my Insta page at Nash Henkel Art. You can see some of the other creative things that I've been up to. Good luck customizing your own clothes.